Hi guys, this is Paul with Tweet Town. We're still here at Flash Memory Summit 2014. And today we're sitting down with Emilio Billy. He is the CTO and founder of A3Cube. A3Cube kind of has a different view of how to manage networking and networking capabilities, a new type of fabric. If you could just give us a brief overview of your product. Yes, of course. First of all, nice to meet you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here to explain uh, how our uh, technology. So, uh, the basic idea in a nutshell is to use uh, a PC Express uh, uh, type of connection to extend uh, the uh, memory capability of a single node across the, the fabric. So creating what we call an in-memory fabric. What does this mean? This means that we use PC Express to open a, a memory windows locally and remotely and share across all the nodes, creating something that is more powerful than RDMA because RDMA is just DMA remotely. We, in this way, we have a local load and store operation and remote local uh, load and store operation. We have a, a parallel I.O., programmable I.O. We have local and remote access to the to their I.O. resources. So we extend the full capability of the memory across all the cluster at hardware level. So it means that we bypass uh, all the software stack inside the operating system, providing uh, the direct access from the CPU to another CPU using just memory messaging between local and remote machine. So the memory appears as if it's in within the same box, even though it's actually at a remote location. Yes, yes. The communication exactly between the local and the remote memory happens in the same way that it normally happens in a local box. And this is the actual product. If you could kind of tell us a little bit about yes. the product and how this it works. This is uh, basically is a network card that plug uh, into a standard uh, PC Express by 8 slot. And the chip that we have inside is uh, our secret sauce that provide what we call uh, uh, distributed non transparent bridging. So what does this mean? It's uh, uh, hard at hardware level open a memory windows uh, into the base address register of the PC Express and then use these memory windows to connect to other nodes with the same mechanism, creating the memory-to-memory -memory communication at hardware level. So it's like you have uh, one server here, another server here, connecting with this card. The memory that you have here is accessible from the remote node and vice versa. And does that require any modification to existing applications? Well, we create a software foundation that uh, permits to be used in many different ways. One of the most important is uh, the legacy with the existing application and, uh, and, and technology. So for example, we have a TCP IP full stack that run using our in-memory. So if you have a Hadoop application or TCP IP application and you want to extol a microsecond latency between one node and another one, you just use our library and the application run without any kind of modification. If you want to aggregate storage, another capability that we have, the capability to take, for example, if you have a 10 terabyte of storage in one server and you put 10 servers together, you have 100 terabyte and you see as a global namespace, but this is a fully POSIS compliant, so the application see this terab 10 terabyte, 100 terabyte of space as a single disk connected locally. And the access time between the local and remote and the remote to, to remote disk is quite the same that uh, if the disk was really attached locally. And I know that you guys are using a new type of cable system here, and yes. you have six connections per card, which is a lot. That's a lot more than a typical network card. And this is the, the copper version that has a length of five meters restriction, and then you also have other options? We have the optical one that is up to 100 meters. And uh, the reason because we have a SIS connector uh, are basically two. The first one, to avoid the use of external switches, so we can scale just adding this interface into existing hardware and coupling in a multidimensional mesh or a ring or whatever, depending on the dimension. And also to have a redundancy, because this hardware is designed to be uh, very, very strong in terms of uh, uh, capability to recover itself from error of cabling, uh, fault uh, of any kind of uh, communication fault and so on. So the idea was to use this new type of connector that coming from the military space, is they are manufactured by Airborne, is a military company, a cable company based in Texas. This is a fully productized. 
and uh, they are really readable because you can support up to 10,000 insertion and disconnection of the cables That's pretty without, durable. without losing now. So the idea was um, data and storage are to be considered mission critical devices. So we need to provide the technology that is mission critical. Absolutely, and this could allow you to be a little bit more expansive in designs and architectures of data center yes. rack deployments and things like that. Like you could use, almost use memory instead of your, your storage subsystem yes. or use it to cache or those type of Absolutely. capabilities possible? Th this mechanism of communication permit to our software foundation to aggregate not only storage but also memory in an elastic way. So if you have uh, 128 uh, gigabyte of memory per server, you can aggregate uh, multiple servers and create a giant caching system in memory where you can put the application in memory directly or just use as a caching for the SSD. So it's uh, in elastic way. What does it mean elastic way? Our uh, communication model is absolutely uh, different from the standard uh, shared memory because it's not coherent. So we don't use any kind of cache coherency. And this permits to create uh, an elastic memory model where we can add memory when the system is running and aggregate. So it became very flexible to manage the requirement also when you need to scale in uh, something that is already uh, working. Excellent. And so this can enable some new type of architectures and rethinking of existing uh, systems. Yeah. Do you guys foresee maybe this being really relevant in the hyperscale market or what yes. kind of target markets are you looking for? Right Our now? target is to create, for example, a new kind of parallel storage and parallel analytic machine for Hadoop. Uh, with, uh, with very, very uh, sc scalability and uh, high performance, extremely low latency. So it's designed to have something that uh, really can permit to companies to scale the capability of analysis of data and so on using standard hardware at a lower price than any other existing technology, but with better performance because we use something that is already inside the server that is the capability of the memory communication and spread across all the nodes. And you don't require any switches or need any other associated hardware, it's pretty much just that. And do you see this as being, let's say we have some existing network infrastructure, would this be a replacement for that, say an, uh, an ethernet card? or would this be complementary or how would you deploy this? Okay, the idea that I see these is a complementary because we can use these uh, fabric, for example, inside one, class, one, uh, one rack or multiple rack to accelerate the application and the storage inside this rack, but we can still use the 10 gigabit Ethernet, Infineon, whatever, for the connectivity with the rest of the data center and with the rest of the world. It's something that uh, is complementary because uh, you can accelerate existing application without changing the topology and the IP topology inside your data center because you can just add this uh, behind the server and say to application to locally use this for the communication and when they have to communicate with the data center use the internet or the Infiniband interface. Excellent. Well, it sounds exciting and it's definitely going to enable some new architectures in the data center. We, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks.